class. Uh, today we're going to be talking about quantum theory and really kind of those earlier um, discoveries about the electron that kind of led us into um, things such as electron configurations um, and how really we put the periodic table together, as you'll kind of see in the next few um, presentations. But properties of waves, um, you kind of need to just be familiar with several um, properties of waves. Um, such as, here's just a diagram, um, amplitude is how tall the wave is, or how um, deep it goes. Uh, the top of this is called a crest, a crest over here, and the bottom is called the trough. All right. And a wavelength is just a successive, um, how long it is between two successive parts on our wave. Okay, so this would be crest to crest. Um, we could also, I mean, this is going to keep on coming down like this. Uh, another wavelength would be trough to trough, or we can go from where it crosses to where it crosses. But there's lots of different ways to really measure wavelength. Um, wavelength is given the Greek symbol lambda. Okay, let's get an upside down y. And again, it's the distance between identical points on successive waves. Amplitude is the vertical distance from the midline to either the peak or the trough. It's really how tall the wave is. Okay, and know that amplitude is not from the top of a crest to the bottom of a trough, but it is to the midline. All right. So properties of waves. Um, this is kind of just I have two descriptions of kind of a wave propagating. So. Here's our little seagull, kind of between two, um, what would it be, two crests. And now the wave's kind of moving, I know we might say the wave's moving this direction, okay? So, it's frequently as a crest moves past our bird, that is known as the frequency, and it's given the Greek symbol nu. It looks like a V, but it's really the Greek symbol nu, which is just in U. Okay? Frequency is the number of waves that pass through a particular point in a given second. So we usually say per second, and per second, or 1 over s, this is a 1, is the same as a hertz. All right, which is what that is symbolizing right there. All right, so hertz is how we, um, is the unit for frequency, and it just means per second. Okay, so if the waves go by this bird at 1 per second, it'd be 1 hertz. It was 30 times per second be 30 hertz. All right, AP class, so this is a demo. Um, I'm at school, I just transported myself here magically, and voila, I'm here with some arms over there. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate waves real quick. So I am making a wave or part of a wave, or but we have a crest trough, crest trough, crest trough. So how many waves can you see at any given point right now? Think about it in your head. All right. If you thought one, you were wrong. You have half a wave. All right. Because a wave consists of both a cross and a trough, okay? both a crest and a trough. So a full wavelength would look something like this. All right. And now we have a full wavelength because we have a crest and trough simultaneously. All right. And how long is this wavelength? It's probably I don't know, six feet long or something like that. Okay. Um, if you were to imagine, again, we'll go back to the half wavelength, and just imagine a point in the middle somewhere, and we're just going to say, how often does this wave pass that point in the middle? So we would go, passes, 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 passes. And that's what frequency is, how many times per second, okay? If I go to a wavelength that's six feet long, and how big would that wavelength be? It might be 12 feet long. So, now, if we just go back to our single wavelength, how often does a crest pass to give a point? Now, 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 now. So the frequency has doubled because our wavelength has gotten half, has been halved, okay? Half, half the wavelength goes twice the frequency. If I try to make some more wavelengths, good job, arm. Okay. So now we have maybe two wavelengths going. All right, so they're much smaller. I can get them going. Much smaller, the frequency is bigger. And now, you might be able to tell from me, this is taking a lot of energy. Okay? So, small wavelength equals big frequency equals big energy. Alright? Which I think you're going to see on the next slide is how you're going to remember this stuff. 
All right? So radio waves have really big energy. Scratch that. Radio waves have really big wavelengths, but really small energy. Gamma rays have really small wavelengths, but a lot of energy. Okay? Thank you. All right. Um, Maxwell. 1873 proposed that visible light consists of what, what we now call as electromagnetic waves. Right? And electromagnetic waves, based on their title, have two parts to them. They have an electronic component, or an electric component, and they have a magnetic component. All right? And notice that these components, uh, it's kind of on an, on an axis, x, y, and z, are perpendicular to each other. Or they are at 90 degrees. Okay? So, um, if, for instance, um, if you had an old television, not an LCD screen, but or a plasma, but like a big box, those are called CRTs or cathode ray tubes. Um, it's how kind of that was um, how electrons were kind of discovered from our, our thing, our first unit. But anyways, if you put a magnet up to a CRT, if you've ever done that, you may have had a parent yell at you for doing that. But what happens? It throws the picture off. How come? Because that magnet. Okay, magnetic field influences the electric component of this beam of light that's shooting from our cathode ray tube, and it affects those electrons, so they're not hitting the little phosphors. If you look really, really closely at a TV screen, um, you'll see like a little red component, blue component, green component. All right, and this beam of light is supposed to hit those in such a pattern that we see images that we there's a hat. There's a shoe. There's a person. All right. So, but as we have all these little pixels that are turned on and off with a beam of light, they're hitting the wrong pixels, which means our our picture screwed up. Okay, because the magnetic portion is messing with the electronic proportion, elect, electric electric proportion. Um, speed of light in a vacuum is three times ten to the eighth meters per second. Um, it is always c. For most importantly. We've got E equals MC squared, and this C right here is the speed of light C, okay? Um, M is mass, and mass times speed of light squared equals energy, okay? Um, all electromagnetic radiation um, travels at the speed of light in a vacuum, okay? And we have this equation, C equals lambda nu. <coughs> Um, what is electromagnetic radiation? It's anything from gamma rays, which is the most energetic, okay, has the most energy, to radio waves, which have the least amount of energy. All right. Um, you don't need to memorize, you know, wavelengths or frequencies for these. But again, know that gamma rays have the most energy. So you might say energy is high. Um, what does it mean about wavelength? Wavelength, we'll see up here, is really small. And if energy is high, what's true about nu? It is really big as well. Okay? So radio waves, if we just do E, lambda, and nu. So radio waves have low energy, they have large wavelengths, and they have low frequency. Okay? Because their wavelengths are so big, it takes them a while to pass through the same point. <coughs> and then we have visible that's in the middle. All right, And this is just our Roy G. Biv. It's kind of backwards here with visible on the left. But Roy G. Biv is just a really, really small portion. Visible light is a really small portion of the electromagnetic um, range. All right, so just a quick problem. A photon has a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 4th hertz. Convert this frequency into wavelength, and we want nanometers. Does this frequency fall in the visible region? So we've got C equals lambda nu. Do you know what C is? Sure. It is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And that equals, what is the wavelength? So we don't know wavelength. We might just put x there. And here for frequency, we're going to do 6.0 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And again, what is a hertz? It's really a 1 over second. OK? So how do we get lambda by itself? We're going to divide both sides. We're going to have 6.0 times 10 to the 14th, 1 over seconds. And 6.0 times 10 to the 14th, 1 over seconds. So that side's good. So we have our equation set up for wavelength. And what happens if we divide 
um, anything by itself, it goes away. So seconds goes away because they're both in the denominator, so we're left with meters, which makes sense because we want a wave length. Okay, and then with this, I know what we can do. Um, 3 divided by 6 is 0 0.5, and 8 minus 14 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, um, we might change that into 5 times 10 to the negative 5th. And notice this is still meters, but we want nanometers. So we might do just a quick problem. And go from meters to nanometers. And what is that relationship? Well, one meter equals 10 to the ninth nanometers. All right. Um, and I did something. I did something screwy over here. So we're going to get an answer of 5 times 10 to the 4th. Ah, that's what we did. This is a 4 right here, not a 14. Excellent. All right, so we have 0 0.5, 8 minus 4 is 4, and then this is going to become a 3. All right, and 3 plus 9 eesh, is 10 to the 12th nanometers. All right. Um, it's nice because I know what nanometers should be in kind of in that spectrum and I knew my answer was screwy. Okay. So with this, um, does this fall in the visible spectrum? Let's go back. Visible is about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Okay. So it does not. It is more in the radio wave section. Okay. Um, all right. Keep on going. Black body problem. Um, this is if you have um, a stove that's not a flat top, so it has like the little round black thing. Okay, um, if it's black, what types of wavelength does that black thing absorb? If it's black, it absorbs all wavelengths, so it absorbs every color of light, and we see that as black because it's absorbing everything. Okay, well if we heat it up, and now instead of absorbing light, it gives off light. It turns out like reddish yellow color. What's happening now? Well, it is emitting every wavelength of light, theoretically. Okay, so at different temperatures, that colors me a little bit different. Okay, so um, if it's really, really hot, it's that bright red. If it's not quite as hot, it's like a yellow. And there's also a UV portion to it and an infrared portion to it, which our eyes don't see, but it's giving off at different temperatures. Okay, so what they found was that they expected every wavelength to be emitted because it's black and must absorb every wavelength. But what they found was there were only certain infrared wavelengths that were emitted, only certain reds or yellows or oranges. So Planck, Max Planck, came up with the idea that energy must be absorbed or emitted in discrete units, which he called quantum. Okay? So just quanta, quanta of energy. So quantum is just plural of quanta. All right, so that was one of the problems that was kind of solved back in the early 20th century. Another sol problem was solved by Einstein, which was known as the photoelectric effect. Okay, and with this, they found that if they shone light on metal, okay, and it might be red light, blue light, green light, different frequencies of light, um, different voltages could be measured if there's just a positive metal rod with some metal around it. Okay, which led Einstein to say that light must have both a wave nature, which makes sense because we talk about frequencies and wavelengths, but it also has a particle nature. So what happens is these photons or packets of light hit the metal with enough energy that they actually cause an electron to be jettisoned. jettisoned. So what's happened to this electron? It gets attracted to this positive, and we have what's called electricity because we have a flow of electrons. And as this light hits this metal, more and more electrons are knocked off, and we have flow of electricity. Okay, And it, this is essentially how um, photovoltaic cells work on roofs or cars or, or stuff like that. The sunlight's hitting electrons off pieces of metal, and a current is um, captured because of this loss of electrons from our metal. All right, so photon is a particle of light. Okay, So wave nature because stuff has wavelength and frequency, that's obvious. 
but there must also be a particle nature of light due to the what we know now as the photoelectric effect. Okay, and again, particle of light or a quanta of energy, quanta of E. Alright, when copper is bombarded with high energy electrons, x-rays are emitted. Calculate the energy in joules associated with photons if the wavelength of x-rays is 0.154 nanometers. Alright, so we have a couple equations. There's one on this last slide. Let's get back here. Right here. E equals h nu. Uh, it relates frequency to energy. All right. Uh, it's Planck's equation, um, and Planck has a constant named after him. But kind of if we get back to here, all right, so we want to calculate energy. So we have two equations. We have E equals H nu, and we also have C equals lambda nu. And what's true about these two equations? What do they have in common? Well, they both have A nu, all right? So if we rearrange this equation to solve for nu, nu is equal to C over lambda, all right? So if we substitute this equation in here, we can say E is really H times C all divided by lambda. All right? Do we know H? Yes, it's a constant. Do we know C? Yes, it's a constant. Do we know wavelength? We do. Unfortunately, it is in nanometers. Okay? And because C is always meters per second, and because nu is always per second, what does this wavelength have to be in? It's got to be in meters, okay? So, real quick, we need to do a quick calculation to get 1.54 nanometers into meters. All right, so we're going to have nanometers and then meter again. Meters on top, one meter equals 10 to the ninth nanometers. So probably the easiest way to do this is just leave it as 0.154 times 10 to the negative ninth meters, okay? All right, and the rest of it, we're going to substitute over here. So E equals H, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. All right, and we're going to multiply that by speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're going to divide all of that by 0.154 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. And notice if we look at our units, um, meters, meters, seconds in the denominator, whoops, seconds in the, um, I'm sorry, my bad, again, this is joules times seconds. So we have seconds in the numerator, seconds in the denominator, and what we want to find out is our only unit left is joules, which is how we measure energy, calculate the energy. And if we do that math, we get 1.29 times 10 to the negative 15th joules. All right? Um, and moving on. Um, the other thing that we find is um, we can separate light with a prism. Okay? But what we found was as we looked at elements getting excited, okay, so if we had hydrogen and lit hydrogen on fire, again, instead of getting a full spectrum, we only got bits and pieces of our spectrum. So if we... Um, light hydrogen on fire or uh, pass electricity through a glass, a piece of glass that has hydrogen gas in it, we only get four distinct lines. We get a red line, a green line, a blue line, and a purple line. Okay? So how is that? How could we explain that? Um, here's a bunch more. Lithium just has two lines. Sodium, kind of two bright yellow lines. Um, our lamps and our street light, lights are sodium vapor lamps. So they kind of like yellow hue at night. Um, but kind of, how did we? How could we explain that? So Bohr came up with this model of the atom. So it's after um, Planck pudding. It's after Rutherford's model, um, and it's kind of known as the planetary model. Okay, so you kind of have the sun in the middle, and then you kind of have these um, energy levels that are at certain distances from our sun or from our nucleus. Okay, and what he said was electrons can only have specific or quantized energy values. How do you get that? He got that from Planck's work in 1900. Light is emitted as electrons move from one energy level to a lower energy level. All right, so if we have an electron that starts down here 
and gets jumped up to this energy level. Okay, it is what's really known as an excited state. Does it stay there? No, it does not. So eventually, that electron is going to fall back down. Okay, and not really eventually, but really, really quickly, almost simultaneously. So as it falls, it had to gain energy from somewhere to get excited. Okay, um, in these tubes, we're supplying electricity. Um, it might be that we have it on it's um, it's on fire, um, and or we're just adding heat. Um, but as this electron falls back down, the amount of energy it absorbed, it's going to also release. So as it falls, it's going to give off energy, and depending on this amount of fall, okay, because it's not really falling, it's just going back to a lower energy, depending on what that step is, it gives off a certain color of light. Um, and here is the equation that tells us this, and it's kind of the Rydberg equation, um, and the Rydberg constant, but really, I mean, here's a great, great, great kind of how you can imagine it. Um, so red, if we think of Roy G. Biv, red has the least amount of energy. So if we were just to fall from this step, and we might name these, um, here's n equals 1, here's n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. So if an electron is falling from the fifth energy level to the fourth energy level, that's a really small drop. So it's going to give off something that has not a whole lot of energy, such as red light. If something's dropping from n equals 3 to n equals 1, that's a really big drop in energy. Okay, So it's going to give a color that is more energetic, such as green in this case. If something fell from maybe 4 all the way to 1, we might see something that's blue. If it fell from 5 all the way to 1, we might see something violet. If it falls maybe from 6 to 1, okay, so maybe it's beyond violet. So what do we call that? We call that ultraviolet. And again, that's something we don't see as humans. Alright, so again, energy is related to frequency. Frequency is related to wavelength. All right. Um, and again, this is hydrogen. All right. Um, these are these four colors that we see for hydrogen. We see a red, a green, a blue, and a violet. But at the same time, we have all these really big drops, which are ultraviolet drops. And we have these smaller drops, which are infrared drops. Okay, so these are IR drops, and these are UV drops. Okay, it just happens that we see these four visibly. And here's kind of the Rydberg equation, which I think you'll be using for at least one of your problems in your homework. Um, this is just the in levels, your energy levels, and notice it's initial minus final. Um, and that is it. Alright, so again, we will see you tomorrow.